we do learn through our life. We all know that if you're going to um, keep up with whatever you're doing, you've got to keep learning. Much of our education is still mired in past beliefs. For example, if I say to you, um, I'm very good at math, then what do you think? I think, wow, something genetic is at work here. It's not true. 48% only of you is what your genes make you. The genes you're born with are not necessarily the genes you die with. IQ can be increased. The uh, talent you have can be developed through your life. And that mindset in, in the South African context has not permeated education at all, to be quite honest. We still view ability as something you either have or don't have. We still view talent as something you're born with or not. It's nonsense, man. Talent is a process, it's not a product. So that's at the heart of, of what we do. The, the other major project that we are busy with now uh, revolves around this uh, idea of can you improve people's cognitive function? Can you train them to think better and can you improve people's intelligence? And we believe the answer to all of that is yes. Some colleagues of ours at Harvard tested four-year-old kids and they found that without exception, without exception, 100% of the kids, the four-year-olds that they trained, operate at genius level, 100% of them. Now, if you've got four-year-old kids or you've had, then you know how they operate. I mean, the stuff they can cook up is amazing. They tested also 20-year-olds, uh, and they found that just 10% of them operate at genius level. And then they tested beyond that, and that's always the bad news for all of us here. Two percent only operate the genius level beyond that. So um, somebody interviewed me once on the radio and said, so, so what happens? I said, well, what happens to all of us between four years and 20 years? We go to school. And all the evidence shows that schooling effectively kills creativity to a large extent in many, many kids. Now that's not in any way disparaging to teachers. They do a great job under difficult circumstances. But the regimen of school, the structure of school, the way in which you're constrained, often does it. I mean, what's the worst thing you can do at school? It's make a mistake. Huh? In the old days, when you made a mistake, you know, they still had rulers and all those things. <laughs> We learn more from our mistakes often than our successes. So I'm not saying that creativity and making mistakes uh, are the same thing. Obviously they're not. But if we aren't prepared to make mistakes, then we're never going to keep on developing and growing our creative abilities and so on. I think it's a crime, actually, in this country against the kids, and that is the math results. Three out of every hundred kids who started school 12 years ago passed math with more than 50%. Now, I think that is absolutely a crime against the children. I think that's terrible. What? Are we then so stupid? As South Africans, that we can't do maths is ridiculous. Of course we can. I'd love to show that our kids are not only capable, but extremely capable. And it doesn't matter where they come from. You know, this notion that because your home language was Sutu, you can't do maths is baloney, man. I mean, it's real nonsense, especially since the math language is a language in its own right. So you've got to learn that language in any country. I mean, can you imagine? Some kids from the townships, some t kids from the rural areas who really achieve in math. Imagine what it does to the psyche of the nation if we can do such a thing. Now I think we can do such a thing. And so that's what we're trying to do. Um, 
the way we communicate has changed. The way we learn has changed. And we've got to look at adapting education um, accordingly. And that's what I would like to see with, within our company, that we can continue to offer relevant, appropriate learning to people wherever they are through whatever medium is available.